Hello everyone, welcome to Eurogynecology for Beginners. Today, I would like to invite Diksha ma'am, our Thank favorite. Thank you. Thank you, Monica, for this invitation to discuss one of the spaces in anatomy. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Dr. Pradeep sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting uh, us <laughs> to your to channel. channel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. So, will you tell Monica what are we going to discuss? Ma today? Our next space is transobturator space. Okay. So let's have a quick recall. What all spaces we have done? First space? First space we have done white line ma'am, ATFP, and we have done sacrospinous ligament space. And the third space we have done retropubic space or red tear space. Yes. So today we move on to another space which is important for mid urethral sphincter of SUI and that is trans obturator space. So let me tell uh, Pranveep a little bit and Monica mm. about why this space became important for us. Earlier uh, we were not doing many procedures for this but it has an interesting story. When in uh, late 90s and early 20s when this retropubic mid urethral sling era came after having done a few or many of those procedures, people started realizing what we were discussing last time yes. also that there is a risk of uh, too much bladder perforation. Mm -hmm. Okay, they got scared that every time you do it, you need to do a cystoscopy. Mm -hmm. Everywhere facilities might not be there or expertise mm -hmm. might not be there to do a cystoscopy. And moreover, people were scared because of the bladder mm -hmm. perforation. Perfect. So um, minds are like this, they start thinking of something else. Then they came up with a very, uh, this that time uh, the idea which became very popular, they said that mid urethra you can support not just with the retropubic tape, but you can come little more parallel Lateral. to vagina also hmm. and come out rather than coming out through the abdomen, you can come out at the level of groin, groin. Yes. coming out, utilizing the potential of uh, space. space. Okay. Now, here only I'll tell you one thing because it is something which I want you all to understand. Some uh, ears, this um, uh, this TOT or transobturator tapes, medurethral slings became very popular. Everybody started using this, but soon people realized that these uh, uh, these slings, though they did not have the risk of bladder perforation and major vascular injury, but they were associated with long-term no. complications of number one mesh erosion, erosion through the vagina, vagina. and intractable no. groin pain. Right. So these were the two procedures where efficacy also, the way That's this... That's what I want uh, to tell ma'am actually, uh, the, in case of severe rescue, right? Yes. And the problem, the, the main thing is uh, their problem won't goes off. Like, yes. Uh, they because still have the problem still persists there. Yes, and, so. and the efficacy will not be that good. Anyway, when the thing, uh, when the urethra is being held like this in retropubic, it is more flat. flat. So obviously the effect is going when to be compared less. with the TVTR, I think the efficacy is uh, lesser yes, in TVTR. Yes, That's TVTR. why I told, we discussed last time one point that from 2018, Whatever, uh, after 2018, whatever guidelines we are talking about, they are all promoting keeping TVTR at the first intervention as compared to TVT o -O. or what is commonly known as trans OT or transobturator T. So I will uh, finish my uh, part here for this section and I will request Dr. Prandeep. To show the anatomy of the space yes. where Dr. Monica will be helping. Is it okay yes, if ma'am. he shows and he <laughs> will yeah. post today? So may you both <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> you both help each other and yes. make our viewers understand the anatomy of and this. Until then, I'll have a sip of coffee. Thank you, madam, uh, for your uh, description about the space we are discussing today. Now uh, I will show on you a Mia model about this uh, trans obturator space. So you can see here uh, both sides uh, this white color thing what we are showing in this MIA model is the trans obturator, uh, obturator membrane and here what we are missing is the obturator externus muscle whereas in the inside you can see this red color one this is obturator internus and the bulge over the, on the lower side of the obturator internus is the white line and this is the retropubic space which we discussed in the previous um, session and today this how we can easily identify or how we easily remember the, this obturator space is um, by sandwich technique where the slices of bread are made up of like here in this case they are made up of obturator internus and obturator externus and uh, the obturator membrane is the cheese part of the uh, sandwich so, so this is how we describe the uh, obturator space. Monica, can you describe uh, 
how TB2 or uh, processor, what all the uh, muscles we will pierce? Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, for the procedure, to learn in a fun way, I have brought two of our TBTO needles also. Last video, we have brought TBTR needle and we have shown you in the video. Yes. TBTO, we have two needles, sir, because right and left have different helices. So, we'll, ha we'll have to use two different needles for it. And the structures we will be piercing from outside is gracilis muscle first and then adductor brevis and then obturator externus then our own obturator membrane and obturator internus. Monica you have nicely explained uh, what are the muscles we pierce. Can you just tell the procedure too? Yes sir. Thank you sir. And uh, in this procedure just like TVTR, we will give incision near the mid uh, in the vagina near the mid urethral position. That is one one centimeter below the external urethral meatus will be our first start of the incision, and one centimeter will be the length of the incision. So we will incise it, dissect the plane of the fascia, para we will make a para urethral tunnel till pubic rami is reached. We can feel with the pulp of our finger till rami, uh, pubic rami is reached. So, the direction will be towards the pubic rami, not upwards because there we might injure urethra also. So, till here and then we will be piercing muscles. The inside, there are two approaches sir. One is inside out approach and outside in approach. Although the structures pierced are same in both the approaches, the order of piercing differs from inside out and outside in. Yes. For the sake of uh, explain, easy explanation, I am removing the obturator membrane as well as I am pushing the obturator internus little downwards so that it will be easy to show on this MIA model. Thank you sir. For this, we have to give two stab incisions just like TVTR and the stab incisions has to be placed lateral to the clitoris and labia majora in the groove of adductor brevis muscle in lithot in when the patient is in lithotomy position. So now we will start our technique. These are the muscles we will be going to pierce. So first muscle we are piercing is gracilis and the second muscle we will be piercing is adductor brevis. And our last muscle in the outside of the obturator membrane we will be piercing is obturator externus. After we pierce all these muscles, we will be reaching the obturator membrane which is also pierced and then we wrap around, we change the direction of the obturator helix needle. Internus also we will uh -huh. pierce. Yeah. We will we'll also pierce obturator internus and then it will wrap around the ischiopubic rami. It will come in the tunnel we have created, para urethral tunnel we have created and it will come in the mid urethral incision we have given. After we reach here, the, need, uh, the mesh is threaded inside the needle, eye of the needle and then we will come in the same direction we went inside. I want to tell the problems while inserting this needle. Uh, one thing is uh, injuring the urethra. The second one is uh, the most important is the obturator tunnel which lies superior uh, lateral. You can see here this is the obturator tunnel where obturator nerve and obturator vessels will be there and uh, the point of safety margin is 2 to 2.5 centimeters from where we go uh, into this. Uh, to prevent the injury to obturator tunnel, we should stay close to the ischio pubic rami. So very nicely you guys explained, you explained about the anatomy to start with. Also you explained, Monica explained about the procedure and beautifully she told you how we are entering from muscle to muscle and we are entering actually in avascular spaces. In the introduction itself of when I have taught you about the anatomy, I told you that our idea is to cause. We, we are ethical hackers. So we are entering into the space where the rates of complication are minimal even though these are narrow spaces but these are avascular spaces. Then Pradeep also told you about what complication actually can ha happen during this procedure and how we can be safe. So he told about all the relationship, how we can be away from urethra on one hand and away from vascular bundle on the other hand. The trick is to lie as close to the uh, ischiopubic rami during the procedure, during while we are trying to wrap it around, we should be close to the ramus without touching the bone because if it hurts the periosteum, the pain is very really bad 
and it can cause periosteitis okay so this was about the space the trus obturator space which we call as the bread and cheese sandwich, sandwich. okay mm -hmm. why we call it bread and cheese because it's obturator surrounded external, on either side by obturator two muscles in internus are like Obtur two bread <laughs> and what is the cheese <laughs> from the obturator, obturator membrane, obturator membrane. Yes. so i hope all these concepts were shown clearly and you have understood it well what i'm going to tell you because monica was telling that to highlight one point so i'll tell you that this procedure came into again criticism because of mesh erosion and the other was intractable groin pain now even if you are doing this procedure this is a very good procedure for selected cases when the first choice is not tvtr you can very well do this procedure and it is a good procedure for sui treatment so two points i will tell you how you can make it better for your patients first is because the risk of erosion is more as it comes in contact with the vagina for a longer distance so what you can do when you are creating the flap when you are creating the tunnel keep the vaginal flap thick don't make it very thin so that if thick estrogenized vaginal flap is there and you are erosion ended, transfer the less. risk of erosion is definitely less second thing may uh, use a good mesh the recommended polypropylene mesh which is macroporous should be used for this you should not use any hernia mesh that is again i have seen some people using cutting any mesh which is used for hernia and putting is there that is a definite no second point what we can how we can prevent the um, groin pain there is a trick which we have understood in due course of time that when the muscle of the adductor longus muscle gets attached somewhere here and at the level of clitoris we make the entry so whenever you are making choosing that entry point just go around 5 mm outside the groin fold so when you pierce in that area first thing you are not at the groin fold so contracture because of healing or because of mesh fibrosis when it develops it will not cause groin pain okay so the trick is stay around 4 to 5 mm away from the fold of groin i think with this uh, one more important thing i was telling yes. you that i will tell and i totally forgot prandeep no. so when we are discussing this space i told that it was started for treating um, sui yes, for as tot or tvto tape yes. so when we were discussing that it is used for mid urethral sling alone there is historically one more procedure which we were using it this space we were exploiting this space uh, space for and what is that space uh, what six is that procedure prandeep the six arm vaginal tape meshes. meshes when we were using vaginal meshes for prolapse the um, uh, latest addition into that was six arm mesh and the last arm two arms we were uh, putting Close through to white the line and sacrospinous ligament, ligament the middle one through white line right and the Upper most arm. entire part was coming through this space only Top. so yeah, people say that those meshes are outdated we should not uh, think about it we should not talk about it but you never know i think the mesh idea the concept was very good and maybe some newer modification some material will come which will which be more uh, yeah which will be more biocompatible mm -hmm. and will be taken up by our tissues uh, much better and who knows in 10 years 20 years 30 years we'll have a mesh so i think we have to keep on educating our children about the concept of that mesh too and uh, i think with this we are ready to finish this session and we'll come back soon with more information and more anatomy till then stay tuned like share subscribe thank you so much thank you for watching